you may be out there doing product research, looking for different product ideas that you can sell. And what are Amazon gated categories or restricted categories? There are actually potentially hidden gold mines in these categories if you do it right and take the time to get approval to sell these restricted products or to get ungated approved to sell in these categories. Today, I'm gonna to break down exactly what you can do to get approved and ungated in specific categories. The riches are in the niches. I'm gonna explain what that means and why I think it's so powerful for those of you out there who are trying to look for your next product. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, welcome back to those of you who are my subscribers. My name is Brian Newton. I'm a full-time Amazon FBA seller, mentor, and coach. Right here on my YouTube channel, I release weekly videos covering everything Amazon, e-commerce, personal development. So if you enjoy that type of content, do me a favor right now, head on down and press subscribe. I can see each and every one of you who take just a minute to press that subscribe button, and I appreciate each of you. My job right here on this channel is to help educate, teach, impact as many lives as possible, sharing my story and documenting my journey of how I went from a struggling, broke drug addict seven years ago now, all the way to building multiple six-figure online businesses. Let's jump into today's video, going over restricted products, getting ungated in these categories, why I think it's so powerful, coming up. All right, before we do jump into today's video, I wanted to share what I've been able to get approved in. What categories or products am I approved to sell so you know you're in good hands getting advice from me? First off, I've been approved to sell in topical products, which includes like supplements, skincare products, lotions, creams, cosmetics, makeups, those types of things are called topical products. I've also got approval to sell cleaning products in health and household. Cleaning products require approval because there's certain ingredients in there. You have to make sure your product is uh, meet safety requirements. So I've got approval in topical products, health and household. Uh, I've also got approval to sell supplements. So these are pills or uh, nutritional powders, stuff like that require approval. And it actually wasn't too hard to get approval to sell in supplements. All that it required was uh, me to use a USA manufacturer or supplier based here in the United States. And I had to order one custom sample. On this custom sample, it needed three things. It needed my logo and brand logo and the custom label on the bottle. And then on the box that the bottle came in, it required my logo as well. And also my own UPC barcode number. I had to have that on the box. So my logo on the bottle, my logo on the box, my own UPC barcode number, which I just had the supplier manufacturer print on. And then lastly, the full name and address of the manufacturer on the box packaging. Uh, it took some time, several, several weeks to get my manufacturer to make one custom sample for me. And I don't remember the exact cost, but it wasn't uh, cheap. I think it was you know several hundred dollars to get this one sample made. But as soon as I got the sample sent to my house, I simply took some pictures, uh, real pictures, just with my iPhone on my desk of the bottle, the box, showing my UPC, showing my uh, logo, brand logo on the bottle and box, and the full name and address of the uh, manufacturer on the packaging. And Amazon approved me. I think it was took only about two days uh, to get approval. Now, not only have I got approval in supplements and for topical products, but I've helped a lot of my mentorship students, my coaching students, uh, get their products approved in topical as well. I've also got approval in pesticide and pesticide devices. Now this one isn't too hard to get approval in, uh, if you live here in the United States anyways. All that it requires is you log into your Seller Central account and you take an e-learning course all about pesticides and pesticide devices. What are pesticides and pesticide devices? These are things like Roundup, you know, that kills pests and insects and grass. Um, but it's also things that have FDA certified or food non-toxic grade silicone or repels pests and insects. All these types of products are classified by Amazon as pesticide devices. And I just had to take about a, I think it was about 45 minute e-learning course inside my Seller Central account. And a funny thing is I actually took the course outside of my Seller Central account. I wasn't logged in. I just did the course uh, outside on my uh, on an internet tab and it did not sync with my seller account. So I, I wasted a whole hour going through the course, passing each module, the test after each module, and then spent an hour and then finally found out that it didn't even sync to my seller account because I wasn't logged in. So if you do take the e-learning course to sell pesticide devices, make sure you're logged into your seller account. But you do want to pay attention because they do give you a test after each module. And so you have to pay attention. But also guys, things that you wouldn't think of are considered pesticide devices. So of course, like things that repel pests and insects, 
you know, like uh, ultrasonic dog collars or dog barking devices, that's actually considered like ultrasonic pest repellers. You're repelling um, insects and other things like a flea collar is even a pesticide device. So you have to be really careful. This is really challenging for those of you who don't live in the United States. For those of you located outside of the United States, you actually are not allowed to sell this, these types of products. You have to be a U.S. resident and pass the pesticide and e-learning course. So if you've already sent in a product and your product gets flagged, because Amazon will let you create the listing, they'll let you ship in inventory, and then they'll make your inventory, all your inventory, go under stranded status. And basically, if you're outside the U.S., you're out of luck. You have to remove all your inventory and get it shipped to a 3PL or your house and then relabel all the products. Be very careful with the new listing that you don't mention any words like pests or repels insects or non-toxic or antibacterial, antimicrobial. All of these things flag the listing within Amazon's algorithm. So the only option for those of you out there, if you do send in inventory and your listing does get flagged as a pesticide device, is you have to create a whole new listing and try to start all over being extra careful. Um, but that's going to go over, guys, kind of what, uh, what categories I've got approval in. Now let's cover each category step by step, what restrictions there are on each one and how you get approval for each one. All right, guys, let's jump into it. So uh, let's first go over, so restricted products, ungated categories. Before I jump into which categories are restricted and how you get approval into each one, I do want to just mention, I mentioned in the intro, the riches are in the niches. Guys, I coach a lot of people, uh, not only my one-on-one uh, -on -one mentorship students, constantly on Zoom calls with them but also, of course, people who hire me for one-time consulting uh, calls. Now, I never share what their products are, but I do want to share something that I found as a common uh, way to be successful, to make the most money and have the lowest PPC spin. I've honestly seen it work best when uh, sellers go into like a niche, a very specific niche, or maybe they sell a very different kind of odd product that either doesn't appeal to most other sellers, you know, it's not a like a hot, trendy kind of product, um, or it required approval to get a sell uh, to sell it. I've seen the highest revenues, the most success, people making the most sellers making the most money in these specific niches, like lighting products, like topical products and supplements or beauty uh, skincare products. Because if you go through the process I'm going to lay out here in the video today, getting approval, you automatically cut out like 95% of other sellers who won't go through the trouble of getting approval. And for like supplements, guys, again, that was simply just ordering one custom sample. It cost me like $200, which you're going to buy samples anyways from China. So you use uh, for supplements, I got approval. And now you automatically cut out so much competition. So the riches are definitely in the niches. I think this is something we've missed. And I definitely, uh, when I was doing product research, I had heard it a couple times before, yes, but I didn't really understand it or I thought, okay, just pick a good niche. But it's really true, guys. The more specific you can get with your product, it's in a very specific niche. You cut out the competition by putting up a moat or a fence around you. Either you go through the approval process and get ungated or unrestricted to sell that product or it speaks to a very specific target audience, and then you come to market with a high quality product, I promise you, you will be successful almost every single time. All right, let's get into it. So the categories that require approval, uh, just a quick overview, guys, of the categories that require approval are toys and games, some products in there. Toys and games is also off limits for Q4 for new sellers, October 1 through January 1. No new sellers can list new products in toys and games. This is because Amazon has so many knockoffs and fake uh, products like fake Legos, fake Toy Story products, fake Star Wars imitation products in Q4 of people selling knockoffs that they've actually just cut it off for new sellers in Q4 for toys and games. So if you haven't launched uh, your product or not selling uh, toys and games items already, you won't be able to launch in Q4, which is October, November, December. But some products in toys and games and some baby products require safety certificates and a CPC, Child Protection Certificate. Uh, how do you get a CPC or Child Safety uh, you know, Certificate? A CPC, you can work with a supplier in China who has this certificate. Just make sure that it's actually valid and they actually submit to you or provide evidence and proof that they actually have it. Not only do they have it, but it's real and authentic and valid. I once worked with a supplier who said they had the CPC certificate for their products and they even sent me a screenshot of it but later on when I needed it for importing uh, the importing process and getting it into Amazon and to submit to Amazon it was expired so I had to go out and pay I think it was $300 or $350 to a testing facility in China 
and you can send your products there over in China and they will do that safety uh, CPC certificate for you. So some toys and games, some baby products, especially products that babies could like choke on uh, that go in their mouth. These types of products will require a CPC safety certificate. We went over a little bit about topical products. This includes supplements, skincare, makeups, lotions, creams, uh, hair growth serum, eyelash growth serum, anything that essentially a, a person could rub on their skin, on their nails, in their hair, uh, put, you know, eye drops, all those types of products are going to require approval. That comes back to me getting approval in supplements. It usually just requires, and I'll show you here in a minute how to check what exactly you need. Um, but it could be as simple as just ordering one custom sample, logo on the product bottle and box, and full name and address of the manufacturer on the packaging. Some beauty and healthcare products, guys. Beauty and personal care products as well. Uh, a lot of a lot of the same things. It's going to be kind of skincare products, topical creams and serums. Health and household products like cleaning products uh, are going to require approval. Anything that disinfects something, uh, you know, UV sanitizers, these types of products are going to also require approval. So some health and household items. Some electronic items, guys, are going to require approval. Not so much do they require approval like submit evidence of safety stuff, although there may be some of that. Uh, more what happens in electronics is batteries. If your product comes with lithium ion batteries, or it comes with batteries, you have to submit a bunch of information that Amazon wants about the product and the batteries to to Amazon. How many watts does it have? How much voltage does it hold? Uh, how many cells did the battery does the battery have? And this step will come up when you create the listing. You're swishing it over to FBA. At that step there, it'll ask, does your product utilize batteries or contain batteries? You would have to answer yes and then fill out the information they want. Cells, wattage, usage. Uh, material, that kind of stuff, which you get from your supplier. Food and grocery, guys, this is a pretty obvious one. Uh, food and grocery is gated, very off limits. I have not got approval in food and grocery. However, I have worked with a couple students who have approval there. And uh, it's just USA manufacturer, and you go through the process of getting approval and working with FDA certified safety facilities. Automotive, guys, again, like food and grocery, this is a hard one to gotta get approval in. I have not got approval to sell automotive products. This is like seat belt pillows for children. This is like car seats, uh, you know, dash organizers and visor stuff. Automotive is pretty hard to get approval in. The last time I checked, it, you needed to be selling the product on your own website for 90 days. That may have changed, but you will face products in automotive with safety issues. Uh, safety certificates required and it's hard to get approval in because you need a website uh, for 90 days you've been selling your product on. Now, uh, if you're just starting out, obviously we don't have that because we're selling on Amazon first. Lighting products, this can be like chandeliers and pendant lighting and even just normal desktop lamps. Uh, these types of products also require uh, approval to sell. And actually, I have submitted, I think, approval in lighting and got approved before. Again, it was mostly about the manufacturer. Full name and address of the manufacturer was on my packaging. My logo and UPC was on the box. And then my uh, logo was on the products. I think that's all I had to submit to get in lighting. But that was a while ago. I think I did get approval in lighting. And it was very similar to supplements. And I'll show you here in a minute how you check. Uh, pesticide and pesticide devices, especially hard for non-U.S. residents, but for U.S. residents, the e-learning course, uh, and, and, uh, and then you should, and then you pass it and you should get approved there. And then handmade is a smaller category. You have to get approval to sell in handmade. This is for local craftsmen or women that do small batch type products. Maybe you're handmaking t-shirts or handmaking jewelry or handmaking soap. Uh, handmade is a perfect category for that. Okay, uh, before we check like how to, how to check if the product is restricted, uh, here's some other restricted products, alcohol, fine art, uh, some home decor products, CPAP machines, drugs and paraphernalia, marijuana, hemp, tobacco, explosives, some food and beverage, gambling and lottery products, hazardous and prohibited items. That's a big one there. Uh, again, it comes back to batteries or if the product is explosive, that kind of stuff. Some jewelry and precious gems, laser products, lighting products, medical devices and accessories. This is a really important one here. Medical devices, I once, I once, pl I placed a 30% deposit before to a supplier to sell a product that kind of expanded your neck or the spine with a, like a pillow that was inflatable and it stretched out the spine. But I later, after I had already placed my deposit, found out that it was considered a medical device. Now, luckily, the supplier hadn't started production yet. I went straight to my Chase Bank and they refunded me the 30% deposit. I was lucky there 
but check for medical devices. This is products like uh, you know neck stretchers and and uh, anything that you that you see claims of it helping relieve pain or headaches or stretching the body or adjusting the body. That's probably going to be considered a medical device, and that requires approval as well. Lock picking and theft devices. You may have seen this product over and over inside Helium 10. It was a lock picking practice set uh, restricted. Plants and plant seeds, uh, postage meters, recycled. So you guys kind of get the idea here. A lot of stuff that is just, you know, can blow up. It's hard, it's hazardous. Uh, but then some other things that you may have not heard of before, like hazardous and prohibited items and some jewelry and gyms and refrigerants, fire extinguishers, uh, caps for toy guns, smoke bombs, sparklers, flares, hydrofluoric acid, inflatable neck floats for children, face masks, padded crib bumpers. There's an interesting one. Padded crib bumpers or similar products because uh, it can, you know, fall over and suffocate the child. So so definitely check this out. I just Googled Amazon Restricted Products uh, 2021, and this is what came up. Now, how do you check, guys, if the product is restricted? Here's what I would do. Uh, there's one main way. Let's go over. There's basically a couple main ways. Number one is we use the Amazon catalog. So you'll come into the Amazon catalog. Here you'll type in crib bumper. So I went to, I went to um, catalog, add products. And then normally we would go, I'm adding a product not sold on Amazon, but we're not doing that. We're just checking the catalog to see if we're allowed to list the product. So crib bumper, I think I spelled it wrong. Yeah. Okay, crib bumper and then click search. So you can do this on any product, guys. And then on the left-hand side, you can see that there's 10,000 listings in baby products. There's 9,000 in home and kitchen and there's 300 in toys and games. So it looks like to me it's a split. Some sellers are in baby, some sellers are in toys uh, or home and kitchen. I wouldn't go with toys and games because it's very little listings, but that's a super cool trick here, guys. Check the Amazon catalog. So if I click on baby products, which is where I would list this product, that's where probably the majority of the competitors are and making the highest amount of revenue. Uh, you click over here, show variations, and you can see here, guys, right away it says apply to sell show limitations you need approval to list this brand now that's not a problem if you just see new condition you need approval to sell this brand that's not a problem because we're going to be coming up with our own brand but let's keep going down show variations show limitations uh you need approval to list kids and baby furniture products okay uh this is a, a classic baby mesh mini crib liner you can see here it says apply to sell. This is the main problem. You need approval to list kids and baby furniture products. You can click on apply to sell guys and then see what Amazon wants. Now here it says you need approval to sell bubble bath, uh, baby, we're not selling that brand, kids and baby furniture in new condition. That is the problem. However, they're not accepting new products other in baby category as used or like new. That's all fine. We're doing this though right here kids and baby furniture in new condition. Now, sometimes I've pressed request re approval before and I just automatically got approval it was for some topical cleaning products. It's actually happened before to me. But here you would want to select manufacturer and then here is exactly what you would need approval to list uh, this baby crib or mesh liner uh, bumper thing. Uh, photos of the product and its packaging. That's where you'd order, have to order one custom sample. Documents must meet the following criteria. Live photos, not computer generated. Clearly displays all side of the product and the packaging. Include the model number, product name, and both, or both. Include name and physical lo location of the business or manufacturer. Important information must be in English. That's guys what is what you would need to send to Amazon pictures of your products live pictures with your that you take not computer generated computers of the package or pictures of the packaging uh model number of your product you can get that from the supplier the product name you know that and include name and physical location of the business or manufacturer needs to be printed on the packaging I'm going to tell you right now and I would have the supplier who's making this sample for you add the your UPC barcode to the packaging. That's guys is how you will go through and check through the catalog what you need, what products need approval to sell. Now let me just pull up uh, a product uh, that that I know doesn't require approval. So like baby toy. So that's what you'll see. Listing limitations apply. New condition. You need approval to sell in new condition by because da da da. 
here if if we're just looking at like baby toys you can see let's just go through here wow all these are coming back um apply to sell for baby toy well, let me just um okay so let's go plant stand something very basic that i know doesn't require approval this is how it would look if you if it does not require approval to sell you would want the majority of all of these listings in the main category which is patio lawn and garden or home and kitchen there's 600,000 listings in patio there's 32,000 listings in home and kitchen but you would want to click new condition and then this is what you want to see sell this variation new condition sell this product sell this variation down here it's saying listing limitations apply just because you need approval to list this brand but we're not going to be selling that brand we're going to be creating our own brand but this is what you would want to see sell this variation sell this product in new condition on the majority of the of the listings in here under the catalog in the main category making the most revenues overall that guys is how you'll check to see does the product require approval the next thing is you could create a test or dummy listing so you just have to buy one upc or gtin a barcode you create a listing in your seller account let it sit there for a couple weeks if it doesn't go to suppress status or listing detail page removed or you don't get an email from Amazon you probably are okay to go but um, I would try to override the available quantity to at least one because sometimes Amazon will not suspend the listing until you go live or your inventory gets to Amazon which is a huge issue because you just spent thousands of dollars on inventory and then your listing goes stranded or uh, you have to get approval, which is a big issue. The other way is you could do a test listing or test launch, buy 10 samples or get 10 units of a product, create a listing with a UPC barcode or GTIN, uh, list it as FBA or FBM, send it into Amazon if you want to do FBA, those 10 units only. Go live with a very basic listing, see all the product sells, see if you don't get suspended or if the listing doesn't get shut down. That's another way you could check. Please like the video and give me a thumbs up on this video and make sure you are subscribed for a chance to win a 30 minute coaching call with me. I'll pick one lucky winner from this uh, video who comments, likes the video and is subscribed. Product listings, uh, product listing words that can flag your listing like we talked about earlier as a pesticide or requiring approval. Be very careful using the words like repels insects, BPA free, non-toxic, antibacterial, FDA approved, pests, bacteria, bacterial, kills viruses, disinfects, antimicrobial. All of these uh, words or keywords in your listing will probably or back in will probably probably automatically flag your listing as a pesticide. So be very careful. Now, what do you do if you do get suspended? Uh, you, you sent inventory there, you went live, and now your product is stranded, all your inventory is stranded, or your listing detail page has been removed. What do you do? You can hire a suspension and appeals expert on Fiverr. There's some good ones. I can rec recommend one if you need one who can help you provide brand authorization letters, brand invoices if Amazon wants it, and help you with the appeal process and the documents you'll need uh, to submit to Amazon for proof that you should be approved. You can also submit the required documents uh, yourself that Amazon wants and follow the appeals process to get reapproved that they outline in the email they send you. And then you, if, if all else fails, you can remove all your inventory from Amazon, abandon that listing, you'll lose all your reviews and your ranking, remove all the inventory with a removal order, get it to your house or a 3PL, relist the product under a brand new listing, maybe in a different category if you have to, relabel all the products with a new F and SKU, new shipping plan, send them back into Amazon, be very careful with your new listing that you don't use any of those words uh, up above here and then you would do a relaunch brand new launch fresh start but that guys i would be i would do a uh, last option or last resort if you can't use option a uh, expert in suspension and appeals and provide these authorization letters invoices and documents or you can't submit it yourself and seem to get approval that guys is going to wrap up this video going over amazon restricted products and categories and getting ungated and checking if your product requires approval Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Check out my other videos on this channel of going over product research, and I'll see you on my next video.